Okay, I had left off making the virtual drive for the SQL logs iSCSI drive. Set its size to half that of the SQL data or 5 gigs. Alright, we've got three virtual drives now. Let's take a look. Let's connect. Make it persistent. It should be in here. There's the five gigger. Gotta bring it online. Initialize it. MBR. New simple volume. Yes. Yes. And this is SQL logs. Very good. Finish. And it's formatting. Let's go to node 2. Refresh. There it is. Connect. Yes. There's the 5 gigger online. SQL logs. Back to DC. <coughs> We're going to make another one called SQL Temp. <coughs> SQL Temp. SQL Temp. Next. Advanced. Add. IP. 182.168.59. Yes. <clears throat> okay. Next. Finish. Create a virtual. E okay, and this is going to be SQL temp VHD. Next, make it five gigs. Next, temp add. Next, finish four drives. Go to the iSCSI initiator first. Refresh. Connect to it. It will then show up in uh, disk management. Bring it online. Initialize it. Create a new simple volume and format it. Yes. It's going to be SQL temp. Next, finish. Go to iSCSI Initiator, refresh, inactive, connect. Bring it online. SQL temp, one more. SQL backup. Here I'm going to pause this. Just wanted to show you the error that you will get if you attempt to create a virtual hard disk and you don't put the uh, proper file extension on. It does not have the extension. It explicitly tells you in this case. VHD. Do it. Alrighty. What we've got is our full gamut of uh, disks. We've got one, two, three, four, and five disks now. And when we run the uh, validation test, now it's going to have some uh, disks, disks to go through. Um, what will happen is up here, 
you'll see them go on and offline during the test. So let's go. Let's start another validation. One more. And I want to watch. Here we go. All right. Here we go. We'll run the test. Now we should see different disks come on and offline here as it proceeds. I'm just going to bounce back and forth between node 1 and node 2. You're on. Okay, there we go. Started throwing in node 2. You can see down here when it starts throwing in node 2, that's when there's activity on node 2. It brings, it goes through all the disks in different combinations. That's all it does. then pretty soon it'll bring a bunch on and drop a bunch off things like that I'll pause it for a little while until it's done and then we will see the results okay let's check it out the test is completed testing is completed successfully and the configuration is suitable for clustering there's absolutely nothing wrong with it it went through all of those disks virtual disks so she's good to go. Okay, just as a matter of interest with the validation test, when you run the validation test from either node or any node, you could have three nodes, you could have ten nodes, two nodes, it doesn't matter. When you run the validation test and you've selected all those nodes, all of the nodes are tested. You don't need to run the test again from each node also after the test. Um, some of the disks may not be online so depending on how you want to use those persistent connections go through and make sure that they're all brought online before you go installing the uh, application. Alright, we're at the point where we're going to make the cluster now. We're going to actually form the Microsoft cluster. So I'm browsing to our nodes, invoking the cluster manager, and away we go. We have to give it an IP address, and I will give it an IP address of 100 and a name. I'm going to call it A++. Next. Now that we have an actual cluster, in order for SQL to work correctly, we've got to in invoke a service called MSDTC. Alright, so let's go to Services and Applications, right click, configure a service or application, Say yes, we need DTC, 
the distributed transaction coordinator and this also has to have an IP address and I will give it 110 and that's A++ DTC along with the quorum we have the distributed tra transaction coordinator and I made another 1 gig hard drive for MSDTC and it is labeled MSDTC and after this we will be ready to install SQL We'll be ready to put SQL 2008R2 on. Online pending. The service will come online shortly. I like how the node names are different. <laughs> Uppercase in one and... Okay, it's online. Which node is it on? It's on node two. Cluster Network 1, public. Cluster Network 2, private. Very, very good. I believe we are ready for SQL. I'm going to pause and pick it up in a moment. Okay, I'm on node 1. I am going to start the SQL install for the first node of a failover cluster. I'll pause it until it gets going. Okay, this is the introductory screen of the SQL install. Go to installation, new SQL failover cluster. First it does a rule check. and OK and next and accept and next preparing to install. Still preparing. Okay, and this is the second rule check. Make sure that you have all the underlying fundamental infrastructure to set up a failover cluster. Network binding order, Windows firewall warning. Okay, that's not bad. Usually we disable a firewall so that it communicates and the network binding order will not stop it. And that can be modified anyway. Firewall is enabled. Make sure that the appropriate ports are open. Okay, we can avoid it totally by uh, just disabling the firewall. So what I will do is resume and uh, we're going to install everything. <coughs> 